听到我们的声音啊？现在可以了，现在很清楚，可以听到。嗯。好的，不是那，那我们现在可以开始了，准备好了。Oh, OK。嗯，我我我可以讲那个打波子吧，他们还是要我讲别的。呃，您您可以讲那个上点不加瓦谈，上次您不是说讲那个第五篇的内容吗？可以。OK， 我们讲第五篇。Okay, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate. Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we're reading. We're going to study. I, I, I'm not going to read. I'm going to tell you about the fifth canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, first chapter, the activities of Maharaj Priyavrata. Uh, 我接下来要给大家讲的是《圣典博加瓦谈》第五篇第一章 ，Priya Vrata 王的活动。Priya Vrata was the older, the eldest son of Swambhuv Manu. Priya Vrata 王是 Swambhuva 呃 Swambhuva 的年。Swayam Bhuva Manu. Swayam Bhuva Manu the Jangzi. Right, and uh, Maharaj, this Priyavrata, when he was a young man, young, he met, he, he, somehow he got the association with Narada Muni. Uh, and Narada Muni went, took him off to the mountains. And they, did, yeah, they went to the mountains, they did meditation and austerity there. Yeah, Narada Muni is a brahmachari. So he liked to be in the mountains, he liked to be away from the householders, he liked to be away from the women, he liked to be on his own, he could meditate on the Supreme Lord. So Priyavrata went with him and Priyavrata also became like Narada Muni and he became a very advanced devotee. So Sukadeva Goswami was telling Maharaj Parikshit how Maharaj Priyavrata became involved in family life. Sukadeva Goswami just Parikshit Da Jin Jiang Shu Priyavrata Shi Zema Hulai Yu Jian Ru La Jia Ting Shen Hu. And Maharaj Parikshit was surprised. He said that this family life. It's a big entanglement. You get caught up in a lot of karma. You get involved in a lot of material things and it takes you away from the real mission of human life. Right. The mission of human life is to realize oneself and to go back home, back to Godhead. 
，人体生命使命是觉悟自我，回归家园，回归神手。And Narada Muni had been guiding Priyavrata and helping him to understand it, to to realize all of this spiritual knowledge. Narada Muni 就指导 Priyavrata， 并且帮助他。So when Maharaj Parikshit heard this, he was surprised. He thought, well, why, when he was already such an advanced devotee, why did he become, why did he enter into family life? Parikshit, 大惊听了之后，感到非常的惊。他说 ，Priyavrata。No, devotees are usually they have not they're not attracted to family life. But Sukadeva Goswami was telling Maharaj Parikshit that Maharaj Priyavrata, when he became a, a family life, he enjoyed it very much. He had a good he enjoyed his family life. So is it, we we may ask, well, is is anything wrong with enjoying family life? Is that wrong? We may ask, well, is is anything wrong with enjoying family life? Is that wrong? We may ask, well, is is anything wrong with enjoying family life? Material life like that, then you can get entangled in uh, the, all the karma which comes from these activities. Yeah, we work. We work. People work hard. We see many family men. They work hard. For their sense enjoyment, they work hard to get a nice big house and to have nice cars and to have children and to provide a good education for the children. So this is all for their sense enjoyment. Uh, 有一些人呢，他们呃家庭生活，在家庭生活当中，他们努力的工作，呃，他们享受感官。So there's a lot of reactions which come from that. Right? Human life is really meant for getting out of the wheel of birth and death. So if we only get, if we become entangled, we're only thinking about eating and sleeping, and mating and defending, then we forget about the real problem of life, which is is birth and death. Uh, if we are entangled in the material life, then we are entangled in the world. So we try to. It's important people should be trained from the beginning of life. They should practice brahmacari, do austerities, and avoid sex like being involved with the opposite sex and all of these things. So, it should be in the beginning of life. It should be trained from the beginning of life. Yeah, if he's a good brahmachari, then he will not become a family man. But this king Parikshit, that is that Priyavrata, he somehow, although he was trained, well, he got good training and he was a good brahmachari. Still, he became a family man. Uh, Priyavrata Vang, 
他虽然是受到训练成为真守生，他之后依然成为一个有家室的人。So Maharaj Parikshit wants to know what happened, why it became like that. Parikshit 大家就想了解，如果我们在家庭生活当中呢？Guru Mani, are you there? Haribo? Haribo, Guru Mani? And if you fall into the blind well, then you you will never be able to have spiritual good spiritual life. But Maharaj, although he became a family man, he didn't. Fallen, he, he didn't lose his spiritual advancement. He kept his spiritual position. So Maharaj Parikshit wants to understand how did he do it? What happened? Because devotee, one who is a devotee, the devotees are usually liberated persons, and they cannot they cannot become absorbed in family life. Krishna can only be understood by pure devotion. So if a devotee becomes attached to family life, then it's impossible for him to have pure devotion. If we all want to get bliss, we're looking for happiness, but we, we should never try to take it from the material world. There's no bliss in the material world. The real, real bliss is in devotional service. Life and devotional service don't go together. So Maharaj Parikshit was surprised because he heard that Priyavrata was he was attached to family life, but he was also attached to devotional service. So, great, great devotees who have taken shelter of the, the Lord Krishna, then they can never become attached to family, 
family life and family affairs. Life is like in a blazing fire. So many problems, so much anxiety. So anybody who has been in family life or who is in family life just now, they know all about it. They know all the problems which are there. And, and those people who come to the shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, they never want to go into the family life. They want to stay away from it because they know very big trouble, a lot of problems. So when we come to the ship, when we get shelter from Krishna, then we appreciate the higher taste. We don't want that pleasure, that happiness, that so-called happiness of family life. So Maharaj Parikshit wants to understand how could this king who was so attached to his wife and children and home, how could he ever become perfect in Krishna consciousness? Prahlad Maharaj says that one who is one who is very attached to family life, they can never become Krishna conscious. Prahlad Maharaj it doesn't matter if they tr get instruction from others or they try to do it on their own, they'll never become Krishna conscious. So Maharaj Parikshit wants to understand how did Parikshit do it? How did Priyabhata do it, rather? So Sukadeva Goswami tells Maharaj Pariksha, he said, yeah, what, what you're saying is correct, that usually people who have taken shelter of the Supreme Lord, they don't want to enter into family life. But sometimes there are great devotees who have taken shelter of the feet of Krishna and sometimes they, they get stopped, There's some, something stops them from Continuing. Some kind of obstacle may come, but even though there may be some obstacle, still he, he never gives up the position which is achieved. Somebody who is advanced in Krishna consciousness, they cannot go back to material life again. Those who are advanced in Krishna consciousness, they cannot go back to material life again. 
他再也不会回到物质生活当中。So, Sukadeva Goswami says that uh, because a person had absorbed, he was so absorbed in Krishna consciousness, remembering Krishna, sometimes there may be something which stops him. And there are two different reasons, two different things which may stop him in his devotional practice. The first thing which can stop is if they commit some offense, at the, if they offend the Vaishnavas, if they do offenses, some kind of offense to the Vaishnava then that could stop their devotional practice for some time. So that offense to the Vaishnava, that's called the mad elephant offense. It can destroy everything in the garden. So even if one may be an advanced devotee, if he offends a Vaishnava, then uh, he can lose all of his, he can lose his spiritual advancement can be stopped for some time. Right. They may they may even leave Krishna consciousness for some time. After some time they would come back. So that, that's one thing, one reason which may stop people. Uh, the, other, the other thing is that sometimes the Lord himself wants to take that person and put him in a different situation. Just like Haranyakasha, before they were Jai and Vijay, they were gatekeepers in Vaikuntha, but they had to take birth as demons for three births. This was the arrangement of the Lord. Yeah, the Lord desired that they would go in the material world, then he could fight with them. He wanted to have a good fight, so he sent them there to become demons, so they could fight him. So in both cases, they were both advanced devotees, very advanced. So their advancement is never lost. Whatever devotional service we, we have done, you don't lose that. So Priyavrata, he got ordered by his father and by Lord Brahma, he got ordered that he should come into the material life and he should take a wife 
and he should rule the kingdom. So he got ordered to do all of these things. So it meant he had to stop all of his meditation and his spiritual practice. But that was not eternal, only for some time he had to become involved in these res material responsibilities. And after some time, then he will come back, take up again the spiritual duties. Just like sometimes perfect devotees, they come from the spiritual world and they take birth in the material world, just like ordinary people. But because of their practice, because they have already practiced, they've already done so much devotional service, that they soon take up their devotional service again. Just like the story about Bhuvamangal Thakur. He was a great devotee, but he, become, he had become very fallen and he had an affair with a young woman. But then one day the young woman told him that you sh if you were as eager to be with me as you are to be with Krishna, it would be very good. And so when he heard the name Krishna, he immediately changed. So to actually do devotional service, Bhagavad Gita says we must be free from all sinful reactions. And if we're too attached to family, to the home, and to our wife and children, then we cannot become Krishna conscious. So we want to understand how Maharaj Pariksit did this. Mm. Right. So Priya Vrata, because he'd been with Narada Muni, he had made great advancement. He was already like on the highest level of, de of devotion. And he spent all his time engaging, discussing with spiritual topics with Narada Muni, and they didn't worry about anything else. But then his father came to charge to take over the kingdom and to rule the world because the father wanted to retire. 
可是他的父亲就前来要求他来接管这个王国，统治世界，所以他父亲想要退隐。So his father was telling him it's his duty because he's the eldest son and there is nobody else to do it. He should come back and take over the kingdom. But Priyavrata was very happy there in the mountains with Narada Muni. He didn't want to go into the material life. So the order of the father is very important. Father gives an order, it's a duty of the son, he's supposed to obey the order of the father. Just like we often see a young man come to Krishna consciousness and sometimes the father will come and try to take him home. The young man will say, oh, I just want to be a devotee, I just want to chant Hare Krishna. And the father will say, oh, you can chant Hare Krishna at home, you just come home. And but of course, you go home. It's not so easy. When you're in the temple, staying in the then it's not very difficult. You're with all the other devotees, they wake up early and they all chant together. But you go home, nobody else chants and people sleep late, they get up late in the morning. Atmosphere. <laughs> So Priyavrata, he is very eager to go home because he knows it's, got, it's not going to be easy. That he'll easily he'll go home, he can get in a lot of maya and forget about his spiritual practice. He knew that his father's home is a palace, there's nice opulent food there, many beautiful women and so many things to divert the mind from spiritual practice. And Priyavrata also had been taking good training from Narada Muni. Narada Muni had taught him everything about the soul and our relationship with the Supreme Soul. And his father is saying, no, you come home, you have to rule, you have to take over my throne, you have to rule the kingdom. But he thinking, oh no, I, I don't think I want to do that. But father is telling him, no, you can do also, you can still be devotee, you can still do your spiritual practice. You just have to serve the Lord, but at the same time you have to also take care 
of the material duties. You have to rule. And you know, being a father, you know, naturally, if he goes home, he'll, he'll get married and they'll have children, and then you can get attached to the children. But you have to take care of the children, you, you don't neglect them, but you take care of them, educate them, and make them devotees. That we shouldn't be overly attracted to the children. One devotee lady was telling me recently that when she got married, she wanted to have children who would love her and she would love them. But she said, you know, after she got married and she had children, she had four children, but she sees the children that actually, although she loves them, they don't li really love her. <laughs> you know, it, it's common. The parents have children, the mother's very attached to the children, but the children grow up, they don't care about the mother. Just like Krishna had 16,108 16, wives, but, and they were all very beautiful, but he was not attracted or attached to any of them. But at the same time, he dealt with them like a loving husband. He was not attached to them. Yes. In the same way, a devotee can also get married and become in family life and have children, but he shouldn't be too much attached to these, to the wife and the children. If you just take care of your wife and children, then you'll take birth again in the next life. You may take birth as a woman in your next life. So you have to take shelter of the order of the spiritual master. We should serve the instruction of the spiritual master.
especially very important to chant regularly by chanting the holy name then you can think of Krishna and remember Krishna and Krishna's activities. And so a devotee must always remember Krishna. We have to and, and to remember Krishna we have to chant his name. Just like ordinary men, they their mind is always thinking about material activity. A devotee's mind is always thinking about spiritual activities. So he's telling his son, come home. But Narada Muni is there. And Narada Muni says, Guru. And Narada Muni is saying, don't go, you stay here. So, so what to do? So at that time Lord Brahma comes. Lord Brahma comes from the, his heavenly planet, from his, the planet of Brahma Loka. And, and Lord Brahma comes riding on a swan and he comes along with all of his associates like the personified Vedas and other demigods and great sages, they all come together. So Lord Brahma, he's directly born from the navel of Vishnu, right? He's, Lord Brahma has no mother, or his mother is Vishnu. The father and mother are both Vishnu. And Brahma is in charge of the universe. He's the first person. He's given respect by all the other people in the universe because he's the first person in the universe. Brahma, he so they want, they want this Priyavrata, he, he's, he's not just ruling over the planet, the kingdom is the universe, he has to rule the whole universe. So it's a big responsibility. So Brahma has to come and Brahma is going to convince him to go back. There, in, in one day of Brahma, there's, I think, 14 man. So each man, they, they, they have to, they take the responsibility on behalf of Brahma to rule over the universe. So what happened, you see, Priyavrata, he was the eldest son and his brother, he had a brother, a younger brother called Uttanapada. Uttanapada was the father of Dhruva Maharaj. So, Uttan, because Priyavrata had gone to the mountains to do austerity, Uttanapada became the king. Priyavrata 
And after Uttana Pada, then Dhruva Maharaj became the king. And Dhruva Maharaj ruled for a long time. And then the Prachetas, they ruled after Dhruva Maharaj. The Prachetas were there and they ruled. But after them, there was nobody there to rule. So they have to come and get Priyavrata and telling him, you have to come back, you have to take over, you have to rule the universe, very important. And, and Brahma came along with the personified Vedas and so many great sages, they all came to convince him, this is very important, you need to go home. So everybody respected Lord Brahma. When Lord Brahma came there, everyone stood up and offered respects to him. And Narada Muni also and Priyavrata, they all offered respect because Brahma is the father of Narada Muni. So, so Brahma's position, he's, he's, you know, he's a, the most important person in the universe and Narada Muni has to, he has to respect whatever Brahma says. So there, there's a, Priya Vrata and Swayambhuva Manu and Narada and they all are ready to hear the, whatever Lord Brahma has to say. So, uh, Lord Bra Brahma begins. Uh, first of all, Lord Brahma, he shows compassion for Priyavrata. And he, he, he's not angry, but he looks at him and he smiles at him to encourage him. Because Brahma, Lord Brahma likes that somebody does tapasya and they do and they're very renounced. Lord Brahma himself did a lot of austerity. And he knew Narada Muni is a good teacher, he's a good guru, a powerful guru, and he can make a, he can train his disciple to be a very good devotee. So Brahma wants to encourage Priyavrata that although he may have to, although he has to go home, that he, uh, he, he won't lose his devotional service. Brahma就鼓励 
and he will still get the blessings of the spiritual teachers and the great sages. They're all going to bless him. And so Lord Brahma is, is looking at Priyavrata and he's telling him, you know, I know you you don't want to you don't want to become married, you don't want to go into family life, but I have come to convince you that you have to do it. But at the same time, Lord Brahma encourages him that you won't be deviated from your devotional service because in family life you can also be renounced. So Lord Brahma tells Priyavata, don't be jealous of any. Uh, we all have to carry out the order of the Supreme Lord. We cannot disobey the orders of the Supreme Lord. So Narada Muni, Manu, Lord Shiva, they're all Mahajans, they're all great authorities and they all follow the orders of the Supreme Lord. Everyone has to be obedient to whatever instructions are given by the Supreme Lord. And the orders of the Lord are never wrong. The Lord can uh, he, that he purifies everything. So Priyavrata should also accept this order and at the same time he should understand it's the order of the Supreme Lord and it's his duty. He cannot disobey it. The Lord Brahma wants Priyavrata to understand that he had been ordered by the Supreme Lord to come here to tell him this. So we, we should never disobey the order of the Supreme Lord. Even you may be very powerful, like Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva, but still they're obedient, they, they're faithful, they carry out the instructions they're given. So we should Brahma, so he doesn't want Priyavrata to think that Lord Brahma doesn't want Priyavrata to think he's his enemy by telling him that. Lord Brahma is just following the orders of his supreme of the Supreme Lord. So, Lord Brahma says this is true for all living entities, from the highest 
to the lowest, from Lord Brahma down to the tiny ant. We're all under the orders of the Supreme Lord. Material body is given to us by the grace of the Lord. We're meant to use it in His service. So sometimes we become, we do a little austerity or we do some uh, part, we get some power, we become proud. So we have to be very careful not to become proud in the material world. Okay, so we'll stop here today. We'll ask if there's any questions. Well, uh, first of all, we said you never lose what, what devotional service you've done. It's to our eternal credit. With, it's like putting money into the bank. You've got a credit there in the bank. Our Prabhupada says sometimes, he said, just like we make 1% advancement in devotional service, so that 1% will be there. And we, we may stop doing devotional service for some time, but when we begin again, we begin from 1%. It's still there. And, and uh, it's never lost. But sometimes devotional service may be stopped due to offenses. In other words, we commit some offense against we said Vaishnava Aparad. So that offense, because we have offended a devotee, it may take us away, take us out of devotional service. Yeah, you decide to stop associating these. Because you start being critical, and you, you make offenses, and then you think, I don't want to associate with these devotees, we trick ourselves, and we stop associating. Credits we have done in devotional service, they are still there. 
我们在奉献服务当中做了什么样的服务，呃，无论得了有多少，取得了多少的功绩，那这些服服务功劳都在那儿。And after some time, we、we'll、come, we can come back. 过的过一段时间之后，我们可以再回来。Sometimes our mind tricks us that we only see the faults and we complain and every we think I don't want to be a devotee I'm going to leave and we leave we go away and then after some time we regret it and want to come back. We sometimes. Sometimes we just don't realize when we're how well off we are when we're doing devotional service. Sometimes we think, no, this is no good. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting anything from this. I'm not progressing, and we just give up. Then we go away. But after some time, then we think, I want to go back. I want to continue again. We have not realized that devotional service is so good. 嗯，我我们就想着，哎呀，我在这里没有什么进步，我们就想放弃，然后之后呢，我们又后悔了，又想再回来。Is it any clearer? Who asked Who asked this question? Gita Govinda. Gita Govinda. So one time, since I coming by you know. Gita Govinda. Ah, understand.明白了。好，我们下一个问题是未央玛嘎吉问的，什么是叫《逍遥时光》？当我们说上演《逍遥时光》的时候，总是觉得像是在演舞台剧，呃，有导演、有演员、背景、故事、剧本等等这些
But Krishna's pastimes are going on eternally. Krishna comes, different devotees, they come with him, they come from, he tells them to come, come take your birth here, I'm going to be there. So some of his devotees, they come as his devotees, and some of his devotees, they come as demons. And that this way Krishna enjoys his pastimes. He, he enjoys being with the devotees and he also enjoys killing the demons. It's always pastime. Although we say actually Krishna himself, Shamsundra Krishna, he doesn't kill the demons, Vasudev Krishna kills the demons. Shamsundra Krishna, he is enjoying the Rasa Lila, dancing with the gopis. He's with the devotees. But Sh Vasudev Krishna, he's the one who goes and kills the demons. Shamsundra Krishna, he enjoys the Rasa Lila, dancing with the gopis. And Vasudev Krishna, he's the one who goes and kills the demons. So Krishna comes again and again, different time, you yuge, yuge, we say and at different yugas Krishna comes and again he performs his different pastimes. Is it any clearer? Well, you have to be careful. Uh, you know, some of your family members may not be very willing or very eager to accept hearing about Krishna. So hearing about Krishna, these are confidential subject matters. Not for everyone to hear. Yeah, the family members, other people who don't know anything about Krishna consciousness, you have to try to explain to them some other, some more basic aspects so that they can develop faith in the holy name of Krishna and in the topics of Krishna. Yeah, we all have these kind of difficulties when we first come to Krishna consciousness. The people around us often are not so encouraging. Yeah. 
they're not interested in Krishna consciousness and they don't want you to become Krishna conscious. So you want to be a little careful about being around these people and what you let them know. It takes time to introduce people and let them be a little prepared to try to understand Krishna consciousness. Not everybody has, has an open mind and so they have a lot of prejudices and difficulty for them to hear. So try to approach them indirectly, maybe give them a book and say, I read the book, you know, I read this book, what do you think of it, have a read of it, I mean, tell them I read it, and just say, I would think, of, maybe tell me what you think of it, what do you think of it, let them read it. But you should be careful what book you give them. You have to find a book which is uh, more basic teachings, simpler. So you be careful because when you're staying with people, older people, you, they will naturally, they will be worried about you and they want to protect you. And at the same time, they're not open-minded to understand. Okay. Yeah, a good a good book, a, a good book to give them something like maybe coming back, the science of reincarnation. That would be maybe be a good book to give new people. Or if we have the book, uh, Sin Shiji Yuja, Sin Shiji Yuja, yeah. It's a good book to give new people. You can also, if you get a chance, you can also play kirtan. Let them hear the singing, the chanting of the holy names. Play if you can play the kirtan music. That's so, that's nice. And if they like kirtan, then it's very good for them. You don't have to explain about the kirtan to them. Just tell them this is music for the mind. Mm. 
Okay, any other question? Okay, so Jay and Anka Yoshima. Okay. Yes, you should understand the importance of getting spiritual training. You will hear later on as the chapter goes on, Narada Muni does not object to Lord Brahma telling Priyabrata to go and become the king. Narada Muni accepts. But, but Narada Muni wants to give him good training because it's a preparation for becoming the ruler and taking over all these duties in the material world. You want to enter into family life, it's a good training to first of all do some tapasya, do, do some austerity, learn how to control the mind and senses, then you will make a better householder. So Garuda did, uh, Garuda is a bird, so birds eat fish, you can't stop birds from eating fish, but Garuda also is a great devotee, he does so much service for, for the Lord, so Subhari Muni should not have cursed him. So that was an offence on the part of Subari Muni and because of that offence he fell down and his, his meditation was stopped for some time. He'd been meditating in the bottom of the Yamuna and he came out from the Yamuna and decided he wanted to get married. And he got married, he got 50, 50 wives. And, and then after some time, then again he went into, he did meditation, he went wives, they also went with him and they took to, they, got, they meditated and got spiritual perfection. So his, his uh, spiritual advancement was stopped for some time and he, he had to give up his position as a great renunciate, he, had to, he became a, family, a householder. But then again he went on after some time and completed his spiritual practice. 
，因此呢，他的进步就停止了，他放弃了作为气绝者的一个地位，成为了一个基士。这之后呢，他又继续，嗯，他的，呃，灵修，完成了他的灵修生涯。So if we offend the devotee, what should we do? We should we should come to the devotee and beg forgiveness. And sincerely deny forgiveness, but de sincerely request the devotee to forgive us for our offense. Without getting Forgiveness for our offenses, we won't. It won't be possible for us to continue in our devotional practice. In Mayapur, in or in Navadweep, there was a devote. There was someone called Devananda Pandit, and he was a scholar of Srimad Bhagavatam. But he can somehow he got involved with an offence. Haribol. Yes, 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 ma'am. In Mayapur, the Navadweep, 曾经有一位 Devananda Pandit， 他是一位佛舍利佛迦尔山的学者，但是不，但是呢，他就呃做了一个冒犯。His his students offended Shrivas Pandit. His students made an offence, and because he was a teacher, he had to take the reactions on behalf of the students. And because of the offence of his, he came to Lord Chaitanya to ask for. Some blessings, Lord Chaitanya. No, said no. I'm not going to bless you. You're an offender to pure devotees. But then later on, Devananda Pandit. Served a great devotee. There was a devotee called Vekreshwara Pandit, who liked to do kirtan, and he would chant and dance. And while he was chanting and dancing, Devananda Pandit did service for him, and he kept the people back from disturbing him. And so when Lord Chaitanya heard that Devananda Pandit was serving Vekreshwara Pandit, then he was very pleased with Devananda Pandit. Vakrishwara Pandit. Vakrishwara Pandit. Vakrishwara Pandit is in the kirtan. In there, he sings and dances. Devananda Pandit, he just let the people open up and let them disturb Vakrishwara Pandit. He sings in there, in the kirtan. When the devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard about this incident, 就对 Devananda Pandit 感到很很满意。So then Lord Chaitanya told Devananda Pandit, you should go and go to Shrivas Pandit and beg forgiveness for your offences against him. 所以，德巴南德潘德在这次被原谅了，因此，德巴南德潘德就得到了施瓦斯潘德的原谅。And then Lord Chaitanya instructed him in the Srimad Bhagavatam. 这之后，主切丹尼亚就是嗯，就教导他是有关于顺典国家瓦卡的主旨。Okay. How are you going to? Yes, we have the last question. 
食品内容与活动部分的品牌哺乳，感谢护肥宝和干邑。呃，有一个类比，说感官享乐像盐一样，不能太多，也不能太少。这是不是意味着奉献者的生活也需要一点适当的感官享乐呢？或者说，如何正确理解这个比喻呢 ？OK， 啊、yeah. ，So yeah, Prabhupada gives this example, just like salt. When you cook, if there's no salt, there's no taste. But if there's too much salt, then the taste is ruined. So he compares this to sense gratification. So devotees, we need some. We get our sense gratification from chanting Hare Krishna, nice kirtan, and we get sense gratification from having a nice prasadam. But if we if we if we try to just practice dry renunciation. Then the heart becomes hard, and we lose all our taste for devotional service. We don't appreciate devotees. Start to find fault with devotees and criticize people, and we think we're more advanced than they are because we're renounced. So, renoun dry renunciation is not the way in which we can approach Krishna. One time, there was one brahmachari who was a very strict brahmachari, and he lived only on milk and he, he lived only on fr milk and fruits. He didn't eat any cooked food, and so he wanted to see the kirtan in Shrivas Pandit's house. 他非常严格的，他只靠喝牛奶和吃水果而生活，他不吃就用火烹煮的食物，他想去 Shivas Pandit 家看 Kirtan。Now Shivas Pandit, he knew Lord Chaitanya that does not like outsiders, people who are not devotees, coming to the Kirtan. So Shivas Pandit wouldn't let him come, but the Brahmachari. Asked again and again and again, and Srivas thought, "Well, he's a good brahmachari. Let me give him a chance." So he took the brahmachari and he hit, he hit him in the room where they have the kirtan. And Lord Chaitanya came and all the devotees came and they started the kirtan. But after some time Lord Chaitanya said, No, I'm not feeling the ecstasy tonight. Something is wrong. Is there any outsider here who should not be here? Shivas 
So when the, the brahmachari heard this, then he, he felt ashamed and he came out from behind the curtain and he was apologizing. He said, oh, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to disturb the kirtan. I just wanted to see the kirtan. And then the brahmachari said, he said, you know, I'm a brahmachari and I only live on milk and fruits. I don't have any, I don't engage in any sense like uh, material, materialistic activities. I'm quite renounced. And Lord Chaitanya looked at him with disgust and said, You fool, do you think you will get love of Krishna by that? Krishna is only known by pure devotion, not by art, by renunciation, not by brahmacharya, not by just living on milk and fruits. You have to develop your bhakti, your devotion for the Lord. So the brahmachari hearing this, he fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya and he begged forgiveness. And Lord Chaitanya put his lotus feet on the head of the brahmachari and blessed him. So the point is, renunciation, too much renunciation is not good and too much sense gratification is not good. There has to be a proper balance. So we have the balance in our Krishna conscious principles. Eat Krishna Pasada, food offered to Krishna, eat in a regulated manner, don't eat extravagantly. We don't say don't eat, we say don't starve, don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Just like today's ecodicy, so it's a good, it helps us to control the tongue, and by controlling the tongue, then the belly and the genital are controlled. So yeah, devotee, devotee life, it, the, we, ha, we do have our sense gratification, we have the higher taste. Our sense gratification is superior to the sense gratification of the materialist. Our sense gratification is Krishna Prasadam and Kirtan and the association with devotees. Our 
We don't want sense gratification like the hogs and the dogs. Hogs and dogs, they can eat anything, any garbage they put in front of them, they'll eat. For the materialist, sense gratification, is they eat everything and, and then they want to have sex. They're always very absorbed in sex. So for devotees, this is not very important. This is the this is the, this is the this is not the life of a devotee. Sex life is there when people want to have a child. Then that that is religious and that is, that is illegal and that is religious. That is according to Shastra. In married life, you have a child. Okay, no more questions, huh? Mama Jeshula. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Shishya Gurmani, Shishutati, one hand, Hare Krishna. Shishya Gurmani, 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 Shishya Gurmani,